This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to BBCK Presents The Essay Files. Welcome back. This is episode number four. This is your host, Bogus Bird, and my co host, the ever elusive Crazy Cat, is not in today. He called in sick, and unfortunately, we were unable to reschedule. He didn't exactly say what was going on, but he did mention that he had. A few friends over. They were having drinks, him and his wife. Um, And then later that night, he told me he was really tired. I mean, if you ask me, I think he was swinging. But, uh, you know, that's that's probably a conversation for another time. We'll, We'll probably ask him next week when he comes back. But worry not, for the show must go on. Last time on the Essay Files, I had mentioned that uh, my brother is back from California. He is now uh, finished. He has finished serving, and he came home, and he's been here for about a week. He's been staying with me, and it's been interesting. It's been fun having him back. I haven't been able to hang out with him in, in several years, and uh, my other siblings came by to visit, and you know, we had a little get together, had some beers, um, had some vaginas. You know, it was cool. It was fun. It was entertaining. He has not had family around him for many years, and uh, I'm pretty sure he enjoyed himself. I'm glad he did. Um, unfortunately, that very night, my daughter decided to get sick. She got a little cold. And, well, you know, parents, <clears throat> she got us. She got my wife. Uh, she got my son. And, uh, actually, they, she didn't get me. I'm still healthy. I'm still going strong. And, you know, sucks for me because uh, I got to take care of them now. Uh, all week, that's been great. It's been fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, this week has, uh, it kind of sucks. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Just gotta, you just gotta push forward sometimes and uh, just suck it up. <laughs> um, well, anyways, that's pretty much uh, my week. How about we, we talk about this movie now? On today's episode, we will cover Jurassic World Dominion, which is the third movie in the second trilogy. And as CK would put it so elegantly. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Spoilers ahead. Returning to this film, we have Sam Neill as Alan Grant, Laura Dern as Ellie, Jeff Goldblum returns as Ian Malcolm, and then from the newer trilogy, we have Bryce Howard, uh, she comes back as Claire, and Chris Pratt as Owen Grady. Now, for starters, I am a fan of the Jurassic Park movies. I've always thought they were a very cool concept from the very beginning, from Jurassic Park. Uh, Very simple. Uh, Well, not very simple. It was complex. You know, it was, at the time, it was revolutionary. They they did what no movie had done beforehand, and that was create realistic CG that was passable. And for the first time, they did not have to rely 100% on, on animatronics and Puppets basically built from the ground up. It was it was amazing back then. It was, you know, if you look at it now, yeah, sure, you'll see a few things that just don't look right. However, back then, <laughs> it was amazing. It looked so damn real. It looked fucking awesome. And truthfully, it still holds up. I mean, some of those dinosaurs look fucking fantastic. Fast forward to 2022. And we have the 
second trilogy. This is the third in that slot, and this is going to be the end of that new trilogy. And you know what? I don't know if I like it or not. I don't know if it is something that I will say is the way to end a trilogy. There are lots of films that shoot for that trilogy and fall flat on that third movie. But ones that come to mind, I mean, Terminator, the original trilogy, that just, the third one, I mean, you know, we don't, we don't speak about that too much. <laughs> um, Batman Begins, that trilogy, you know, that, I'm sure there's a lots of people who love those films, those Nolan Universe movies, but that third one is just, that third one just missed. It, it, it did not land. It was, it has some cool stuff in there, but no, it just, it just didn't work for me. Um, back to the Future, the one where they go back to the Wild West, I personally do enjoy the film. It does feel a little out of place. It, um, I mean, it does a good job of wrapping everything up, but I don't know. It's the weaker of the three, in my opinion. And I'm not going to say that it's a flop, but I will say it's the worst of the three. The original Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Oh, God, I hated Hated that third one with the passion so much, but I can appreciate it now. I, I can look back and I can enjoy it. It's cheesy, it's corny, it has some shit in that movie, but it's, you know what, I can appreciate it now. And maybe I'll feel that way about Jurassic World Dominion. It was entertaining. I was glued to my seat in certain spots. Um, not so much the beginning, but, you know, basically halfway in, all the way through. I, I, I enjoyed it. I was glued to my seat. I was invested. I wanted to find out what was going on. You know, it was, it was palatable. The first 40 minutes of the movie, though, what the fuck, man? It was disappointing, to say the least. The movie beforehand set it up to be the world of the dinosaurs, where the world was filled with dinosaurs again. And, you know, this this third installment, it showed a little bit of what that world is, but it just, it, it, <laughs> it fucking just took the wrong step. It went in a completely different direction that, the trailers made it look like it it just i don't know it it um, it felt misleading maybe um, i mean i guess you know it, they swerved us and you know they gave us the movie that they thought we wanted but i don't know i mean okay like what i'm talking about is they were they're still caging up some of these dinosaurs right and in and, and one scene i remember that they were putting them to fight against one each, one another. It looked like real life Pokemon, and I mean, yeah, that's really what it was. You know, people collecting dinosaurs and go T Rex fight that uh, Velociraptor, and you know, it just. Um, I guess that was kind of neat. Uh, and then there was poachers for dinosaurs and. Um, you know, there was a whole thing. It looked like there was also a team from the very beginning, the very beginning of the movie. It seemed that there's some sort of team that keeps an eye out on the big ones, at least. They try to warn people where they're headed, question mark. I mean, like, in the intro, that T-Rex just crashes the uh, outside movie theater, and... That helicopter, I mean, they didn't really do anything. They just kind of followed it, shined a light on it. They weren't really warning the people that there was a, di a dinosaur there, but, you know, it was, they were doing something, I guess. And then there was that boat that was fishing. And then, you know, when they put up their, their grate with the fish in it, that 
big ass water creature just took a bite out of crime and you know pretty much sunk the boat took them with it and i mean it just shows how you know these dinosaurs are out in the wild and you know that was a neat uh, thing to show but i guess i want i was expecting more of that i was expecting the whole movie to be that like whatever the story was going to be it was going to be in the world with dinosaurs but they didn't really do that they they teased it they showed us bits and pieces of that and then they sent everyone to an island <laughs> <laughs> this is the one movie where they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to send everyone to the the island of the dinosaurs because the dinosaurs were already in the fucking world. They were already in the wild. But the movie sent them to the dinosaur island again. Why? It was needless. It was unnecessary. <laughs> Jesus. Not only was it unnecessary, but the way that the original trio got back together, it felt so off. It was like, you know, Ellie was like, hey, Alan, remember me? We haven't seen each other in years, but I'm going to go do some investigation work and I need a witness. You're the only person that I trust. And, you know, Alan has been blue ballroom for years and uh, he finds out that she's single. So he's like, yes, I will follow you to the ends of the world, Ellie. And, you know, he goes. And I mean, that's really the that's it. That's the whole reason how they, they got back together. And apparently Dr. Malcolm was working for the, the villainous Apple. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, Biasin. And let's. Be honest here. It was Apple. <laughs> it was Apple. I mean, fuck. The, the CEO of Biosyn is basically Tim Cook's. Uh, I'm serious. Google him. He looks like fucking Tim Cook's, the dude from Biosyn. <laughs> it's fucking Tim Cook. The short white hair, the glasses. I mean, he looked identical. And it, oh, ooh, and in the movie... Come on, HQ was that, uh, that that circle building, a circular building, just like fucking Apple. Come on, dude, it was fucking Apple. Oh, uh, anyways, the CEO Doxon. Oh, let me let me let me back up here. Doxon, Doctor Doxon, he's the CEO of Biosyn. He was in the very first Jurassic Park movie. He was the guy who contracted the, the one dude to steal the DNA from the dinosaurs in the first movie. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he meets the dude up at lunch. And then um, he's like, hey, don't use my real name. The guy's like, Doxon. Doxon's here, everybody. See, nobody cares. And that guy. He's the guy who contracted him. He gave him the, the suitcase. He gave him that little canister of the whipped cream. That was him. That was fucking Doxon. I mean, they don't really tell you that it's him, but... That's fucking him. Kind of cool that he makes a return. You know, I guess it, it ties up loose ends there. That's cool. But anyways, back to back to Apple Mastermind over there. So this time around, Doxon is trying to... He's basically trying to take over the world by controlling the food supply. And the way he does it is he takes these um, fucking bugs... These locusts, he alters their DNA, and then he he sets a shit ton of them free to go eat crops. And they don't eat the crops that are grown by bison seed. So, in a way, they're kind of getting rid of the world food supply and leaving them to be the saviors to feed the world. At this point, they're really giving me that Umbrella Corporation feel. You know what I'm saying? Well, Ellie kind of picks up on that. And then she gets in contact with Malcolm. And he's, since he's working for, for Apple, they're like, hey, you know, we should uh, we should do something about this. And, um, you know, so that, that's basically the, the plot right there. They want to find out. They want to try and stop Doxin from 
taking over the world. But the problem that I have with that is they make a big deal out of these bugs that you kind of forget that it's a movie about fucking dinosaurs. I mean, it's it's Jurassic Park. It's not... Stay with us. We'll be right back. Excuse me, bro. Hey, guys. Have you heard of The Essay Files? No. What's that? It's a weekly podcast that discusses entertainment news. They focus on topics surrounding Marvel movies, the TV shows, DC movies, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, anime news, pop culture properties such as Aliens and Predator, and various other geek culture s- series and movies. That sounds awesome. I'm a huge fan of all those things. Me too. I've been listening to it for weeks now. And it's really funny. The hosts are very knowledgeable about their stuff, and they always have a lot of interesting things to say. So how do I subscribe? You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you can listen to a podcast. Awesome. I'm going to do it right now. You won't regret it. (laughs) 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 Oh, my God. It's not Starship Troopers. It's a movie about dinosaurs. It's not a movie about bugs. But (laughs) apparently this one is. So whatever. Um, So while all of that is going on, we find out on the new characters, uh, Owen and his chick Claire, um, they are basically hiding the little girl from the second movie. The one that was a clone. They're keeping her away because, you know, they're, they're kind of... They wanted to stop the experimentation on her. Because she was the first human clone in the world. They're going to take her, cut her open, take her blood samples. They're going to find out how they made it happen. You know, and, you know, they didn't want that for her. They wanted her to, to grow up and have a regular life. As a kid. And they're hiding out in this small Bucktown woods. And she's a teenager now. It's was this has been about three years later since the second movie, I believe. Three or four. And she's a teenager now, so she's in that teenager stage, trying to be defiant. And you know, she's going further out than she's supposed to. And the dumbass gets fucking caught, right? And well, she gets kidnapped. So now that leaves with uh, Claire and Owen. They're going to go find out where the hell they took her. Oh, let me back up real quick. Apparently Blue, the Velociraptor, is nesting nearby for some reason. They don't really say why. But the Blue Velociraptor, she's nearby and she has her own little egg. A little baby raptor. Um, Maybe they said it in the movie... But, as I recall, she was unable to have eggs, baby raptors. Um, I don't know how she was able to do that, but that's cool. Whatever. Well, that baby also gets captured by the same people who took the girl. So now, Claire and Owen have to go figure out where they took her. And, oh, oh, and uh, Owen makes the promise to the raptor that he'll bring back the baby, too. So, you know, that's cool. Well, um, so now they're heading towards... So now Claire and Owen, they go to this underworld fight, and, you know, that's where they see the Pokemon fighting each other. And, um, you know, they, they end up fighting this one chick in a white dress. Was she important? It seemed like it. But then after they took her down... She 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 was done. She was done in the movie. <laughs> like she's literally she seemed like she was someone important, like she was the big bad, or at least someone that'll be, you know, seen towards the end of the movie. But no, she was middle management. She was taken out in the first scene. She gets gets arrested and she gives up the location of the girl. So now Owen and Claire they're they're headed towards Biosyn. Back to Alan and Ellie and Malcolm. Uh, They basically find out where 
they are keeping the lotus. They find out where they're keeping the bugs. They get a blood sample, and they're ready to go. Well, while all that's, you know, while that's happening, they got their proof that the, that Apple was behind it all. While that's going on, Dr. Wu comes back. Henry Wu, he's that scientist from the second movie who was basically the brains of that whole operation. He's the guy who wanted to create the dinosaurs and sell them off in a black market. That dude, he was, you know, the rich villain. He wanted to make some money out of this. The guy had it all, you know, he had power, he had money, he had uh, people under him. He combed his hair to the side, nice and successful. The guy was powerful. Well, now the guy's a bum. He looks like fucking, <laughs> like if Jackie Chan and Liu Kang had a sad baby, that would be Dr. Wu. The guy looked like shit. And he also had a change of heart, apparently. He's the guy who created the Lotus, by the way. And when he saw what the Lotus were doing, he apparently decided to turn. And now he's a good guy. Yay! He wants to stop the Lotus from eating all the damn food. They don't. He doesn't really say why. He just feels bad about it. Okay, we have this doctor now on the good guy's side, I guess. Makes sense? Not really? Okay. Well, Dr. Wu ends up telling the little girl, um, what was her name? Macy? Yeah, I'm going to go with Macy. Um, he ends up telling her, hey, you know how in the second movie we told you that your grandfather made you? He cloned you from his daughter because she died and, you know, the grandfather missed his daughter, so he made a clone? Remember how that was a thing? Well, apparently now they're saying that was a lie. That was a lie. They basically took the story arc from the second movie and said, nope, out the window. That's not happening anymore. What really happened is the daughter made the clone of herself and impregnated herself with her own clone. Because reasons. And <laughs> um, apparently she then found out that, she, you know, the, she found out that she was sick, that she was dying. And she basically created a cure and changed the DNA of her clone. But it just was too late for her. So she ends up dying and then the little girl lives. And that's where, I guess, that's where the grandpa took, took, took over and... I guess he lied to her because reasons. <laughs> it's so stupid. They fucking just they fucking just changed it on the fly for no reason at all. They overcomplicated that storyline for no real reason. I don't know. It's whatever, man. It, whatever, dude. It's it is what it is. Well, anyways, at some point there is a whole bunch of explosions going on, and the original crew, back to Alan and Ellie and Malcolm, they have the DNA proof of the Lotus, and they're trying to escape. And they run into the little girl, and they try to escape the building because now, you know, fucking Tim Cooks is after them, trying to capture them. And uh, they run into Owen and Claire, who have been there searching for their girl and uh, <laughs> when the when the two groups meet up it's actually kind of cool you know it's, it's kind of nice seeing the og crew with the new crew and um you know they, they had some good dynamics they they don't know each other but they all just know they're on the on the same team and, you know i guess because you know alan and ellie were trying to save little girls so automatically Claire and Owen are like, all right, friends, yay. And um, so they're now on the run. They're trying to get out. And, oh, right, I almost forgot. There's this big-ass dinosaur who apparently is the second villain in the movie. They, the Gigantosaurus is the dinosaur villain of the movie. 
And let me um, jump in right here real quick. I remember reading an article a couple months ago, and literally the headline said, Jurassic World Dominion director explains how the new villainous dinosaur is like the Joker. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Oh, please, 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 please click on the link below and subscribe. Become a bro <laughs> and join the brochachos. Brochachos. Subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Do it. You owe it to yourself. You've earned it. You sat through this far. You've earned it. Do it. You want it. You need it. We need it. Come on. Hit that subscribe. <laughs> hit that follow. Love you guys. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. All right, all right, all right. What the fuck does that even mean? He's like the Joker. Um, <laughs> the fucking dinosaur was in the movie for like five minutes. I, I'm not even exaggerating that. He was in the intro. There was a short fight somewhere in the middle with the T-Rex. And then at this point where, you know, he runs into the, the, the gang and he's trying to eat them. Um, how is that like being the Joker? I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand what that means. It was stupid. It was a stupid line. Why would you say that, director? Dumbass. Well, anyways, it's a big ass dinosaur, Gigantosaurus. He's trying to, you know catch his next meal and well the crew they are they're on the run the crew they're on the run and just when it seems like the little girl is about to get eaten fucking jeff goldblum oh wait uh ian malcolm <laughs> he pulls out the trick that he used on the t-rex in the first movie and it was it was uh, such a cool moment right there he grabs that torch with the flame and he fucking waves it around, getting the big ass T Rex, well, not T Rex, but the big ass dinosaur's attention. And, you know, he's waving it around. And I'm at this point, I'm like, oh, fuck, Malcolm's going to die. You know, they bring back the original crew, they bring back the new crew. Somebody's going to fucking die. And right here, I knew it. It was fucking Malcolm. He was going to die. And he's, you know, he's waving the fucking torch. Dino comes after him and he's, you know, he's about to take a bite and he fucking, <laughs> he fucking shoots that damn, uh, torch into his mouth like a fucking javelin. He just, whoosh, just rams it into his mouth. So now he's on fucking fire, the, the gigantosaurus and Malcolm fucking takes off. He goes and he, you know, he rejoins the rest of the crew. So no death yet um so tim cooks knows that at this point you know he fucked up something's wrong and uh he's not gonna he's not gonna get his way so he decides he wants to try to escape and you know there's this whole underground tunnel with an escape pod and you know he goes in and he's trying to get the hell out of there fun little easter egg this is the part where he shows that he has that can, that canister, the original canister from the first movie. How did he get that? Um, it, they don't say. They, it's just a neat little Easter egg, I guess, because there's no fucking way that he could have that um, in, in the Jurassic Park movie, the first one. Dennis drops that, and it's buried and lost under tons of mud on the original island and you know how the hell is anyone ever going to find that there's just no fucking way that he could possibly have it but pretty cool easter egg um this next scene was very familiar to the first Jurassic park again they're they're pulling quite a few old tricks in this one huh but there's a scene where they basically have to communicate one in the control room and one actually has to go and physically press buttons to turn off the power and turn it back on and you know that sort of thing so 
that's happening, the crew turns off the power, and it turns off the power to the escape pod. Well, Tim Cooks, he ain't gonna fucking wait around. He's trying to then just, just trying to walk out. He gets off from the escape pod, and he runs into that little dinosaur that has the wings on its face. I have no clue what it's fucking called, but it's the thing that killed Dennis, that dude from the first movie. He's the guy who took the canister, right? He's the one who took that DNA samples in the very beginning. He's the guy who gets killed by that little dinosaur with the fucking wings on his face. And now they re- kind of um, rehashed that death scene. And now, you know, Mr. Apple, he's done for because uh, a, he gets swarmed by like five or six of those little dinos and they fucking spit in his face. And, you know, they get you get the whole, ah, I'm dead, scream. And, uh, yeah, that dude's pretty much dead. He's done for. He's gone. So, yeah, the crew now, <laughs> they're trying to escape this, you know, this collapsing HQ. And, bam, here comes the Joker dinosaur. He's back and he's going to eat everybody. Rawr. Well, the fucking hero dinosaur comes in. T-Rex. You know, big-ass Pokemons. Just going at it. Um, kind of cool, kind of cool to see that. Um, but what ends up happening is the T-Rex is just completely outmatched. He gets wrecked. It gets whooped and tossed to the side. And fucking Gigantosaurus (laughs) then has a new challenger. Here comes a new challenger! Another dinosaur that was, uh, you know, made an appearance earlier in the movie for like five seconds. And now he he comes in, he tags in, um, and he starts clawing the fuck out of Gigantosaurus, right? Because he's got these big-ass claws. And um, it gives the T-Rex enough time to wake up, shake it off, and then it's two-on-one. And what's supposed to be a really cool, you know, big-ass dinosaur fight scene Turns up being one headbutt to the Gigantosaurus, and then it just kind of happens to fall into the big ass claws of the other dinosaur, and they won the fight. It's over. They they fucked them up, and you know that, that was that was the end of it. Cool. All right. Well, the crew all live and they get out of there they they have a pilot in there she i guess she did some stuff in this movie um kayla i mean i guess she wasn't super important but she was there you know someone has to fly that helicopter so yeah she flies the helicopter and you know they all escape hardly anyone dies in this movie oh wait i take that back there was one guy who died, who got eaten by a dinosaur about 40 minutes in. It was during that chase scene. <laughs> it was literally the only time you see a dinosaur eat a person. It was a little weird, because it took 40 minutes for that to happen. But, I mean, I I guess they have to keep it PG-13? Question mark? Maybe I'm just being picky. Maybe, I don't know, I just, I wasn't satisfied with it. Um, oh, yeah, that's basically the end, Happy, happily ever after. Um, you know. Oh, yeah, they, they took the time to find Baby Raptor, and they took it with them. Um, yeah, so, yeah, they escaped. They, uh, Ellie and Alan finally hook up, and they're together now. Claire and Owen, they take Baby Raptor back and let it loose, and... Blue has a, a goodbye moment with Owen, and um, I guess, you know, the girl finally accepts them as her parents now, going forward, and maybe she'll stop being a little bitch. Um, like, uh, that's the end, you know? It's There's no real... Oh, yes, my bad. They also take Dr. Gu with them, and he is able to reverse engineer... Um, and stop the lotus from eating everything. 
he basically he puts a virus in one of them, I guess, and that's enough to spread into all of them, and I guess they all die, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, it, it feels so lazy. It just, I, I was, I wasn't happy with it. I, I, I was not happy with the ending. Yes, I was entertained. Yes, it was a you know the end of the trilogy, but it just did not feel like a definitive end. Uh, it, I just I just wasn't one hundred percent happy with it, and it's not that I had these huge expectations of it being such a grand ending. It was just not good. <laughs> it was just, just was not that good. I mean, they could have done so many different things with this. But, you know, they kind of waste the first 40 minutes of the movie making an excuse to get everyone on an island when they didn't have to. I just, oh man, it's just... <sighs> I wasn't happy with it. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm rambling now. Does the movie suck? No, it doesn't suck. But the movie's not great. It's it's okay. Is it worth watching? Yeah, absolutely. Am I glad that um, I was able to watch it in the movie theater? Yes. It was cool to see everything on the big screen. It's a very, very beautiful, beautiful picture. Um, lots of attention to detail. Um, oh, uh in this one, there's a mixture of animatronics and CGI, which is pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, yeah, the way they directed it, it was very cool to see. It was fucking really cool effects. But, no, nah, man, just story. They fucking dropped the ball, man. And um, I think it's one of those films that I watched once. And I'm probably not going to watch again for a long time. You know, maybe if I'm... You know, a couple years from now, they're playing the trilogy on TV or something. Sure, I'll watch it. But it's not something that I'm going to reach for and play on my on my Blu-ray player. It's not something that I'm going to um, actively look for on a streaming service. It's, you know, it's if it's on, I'll watch it. <laughs> if somebody else wants to watch it and I'm there, I'll watch it. But it's not going to be one of my first choices, you know? It's... If I had to give this one a score, it'd have to be, uh, I'd probably give this one a seven. It was, it had its moments. It was entertaining. When the, when the scenes were fast and action was on screen, it was cool. It was fun. It was intense. But so many turns that didn't need to be turned. Ah, I'm, I'm. I mixed and match on this, if you can't tell. But, yeah, you should definitely give it a watch. It's worth that. Would I recommend this to be watched with your kid? Yeah, sure. There's not a whole lot of blood. There's no uh, real cursing or anything like that. Mm, there's a couple jump scenes, but, I mean, it's, it's pretty PG-friendly. It's not going to terrify any child. Not really. <laughs> I think that I would put the first Jurassic Park as my favorite. I think the first Jurassic World comes in second. I just really like the way they brought back that world. They rebooted the series um, and, you know, the story was fun. I think it did Justice as a reboot for the Jurassic Park movies. So I'm going to leave that as in second place. After that, I actually think I would go Jurassic World 2. Yes, that one had its, you know, its stumbles as well. But overall, it was a fun movie. It had a good story. I enjoyed it. Um, then I'm going to have to go Jurassic Park 2. And that's the one where they took out Alan, and it was all about um, Dr. Malcolm. 
And, you know, that was fine, but, you know, not, the, not my favorite. And then I'll have to go Jurassic Park 3, the worst out of that trilogy. That was, I believe, who redconned the, the Jurassic World is supposed to replace that. But if not, um, it's still a horrible movie. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. The effects were bad. The story was bad. But at least they brought back Alan. So, I mean, you know, that was kind of cool. But it still sucked. It was a flop of a movie. And then finally, I would add Dominion. <laughs> so I would put that at the end. I liked Jurassic Park 3 more than I liked Jurassic World Dominion. And that's, you know, now that I'm, I'm laying it out like that, fuck. <sighs> yeah. My least favorite of the six. That's not a good look. That's that's pretty bad. If you get beat by fucking Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> I think that I am done trashing this movie. Uh, again, I'll give it a 7. It's the worst out of the six in my personal opinion. If you find enjoyment out of this movie, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you enjoy it, that's cool. I mean, you know, everyone has their own taste, and this is my own personal take on the movie. I know CK watched this movie as well, but you know, unfortunately, he was unable to 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 join us on today's conversation. Uh, maybe he can weigh in at another time. And and um, but for now, I guess I'm gonna wrap it up. We're gonna keep it short, sweet, and simple today. CK shall return next week and you know we'll chop it up we'll have a fun discussion about Father's Day um, please feel free to email me at bogusbird at thesafiles.com you can find us at the SA Files on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and now on TikTok you can also email CK at crazycat at thesafiles.com and please send him emails. He thinks that, you know, the emails that were sent to him last week are fake. Something about they have, they were possibly written and sent by somebody that he may or may not know. He may or may not have insinuated that I am the culprit, but... <laughs> I think we all know that's not true. It was real fan mail. It's not my fault that, you know, our fan base is just a little nutty. But it's cool. We love you guys. Keep sending that mail. This bird signing off. And I'll leave you with one last thing to think about. Do you know which dinosaur I found scariest in this movie? The Pterodactyl. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Peace out, everybody.